cheetahs have vanished from approximately 90% of their historic range in Africa and are extinct in Asia, except for a single isolated population of perhaps 50 individuals in central Iran. What does the future hold for the species? Hunting has become a controversial practice in modern times. My name is Dan Cabela, and I'm traveling the globe to explore the true impact that hunting is having on our remaining wild landscapes. This practice goes as far back as human history can remember, but does it have a place in modern conservation? High society Western women loved cat skins in the 1900s, and cheetahs were pursued for their pelts. They were rarer than leopards, and therefore fetched a higher price tag. This trade took a huge toll on their numbers. Cheetah skins are still a status symbol. A number of tribes across Africa still use cat skins in various rites of passage. DNA studies of those skins indicate that they have been traded from thousands of miles around. This demand still enables an illicit trade in leopard and cheetah skins across Africa today, putting further pressure on declining populations. There are estimated to be only 7,100 cheetahs left in the wild. Cheetahs are listed as vulnerable by the International Union for Conservation of Nature, and the vast majority of their remaining population occurs in South Africa and Namibia. These wide-ranging cats need a lot of space to roam. Space has become an increasingly scarce resource, especially for wildlife. Cheetahs are not a huntable species in Africa, but their home range overlaps with many areas where hunting is the allocated land use. In the case where these areas provide well-functioning ecosystems with abundant prey, reintroduction efforts could serve to dramatically expand their range and populations across Africa once more. I'm traveling back to the continent to participate in an ambitious relocation of our own. The reintroduction of an apex predator is something our family has become familiar with through the lions that were reintroduced in the Zambezi Delta ecosystem a few years back. In 2018, when we brought the lions in, we didn't have any idea whether it would be a success or whether it wouldn't be. We've got now three times more lions than we had when we brought them in. However, cheetahs are a more sensitive species and a lot of research was required to determine when they were last in the area. Before we can proceed with any reintroduction, the ethical thing to do is to prove that cheetah occurred here historically. I started sifting through literature on English hunters that moved through this area in the late 1800s and early 1900s. And there was a book written called Wild Game Hunting on the Zambezi, written by a chap called Malgam. Goodness gracious, there it was. You know, a cheetah, page 178. Cheetahs, or hunting leopards, are not very numerous in the Zambezi Valley, occurring most plentifully where reebok and other small antelopes are common. I've also seen them in the Melange district of Portuguese East Africa. So then I thought, okay, we've got this, but we just have to make sure that the area that he's referencing is in Marameo. And I went onto Google Maps and I typed that name in and I couldn't believe it. It's practically where the Zambezi River goes into the sea. I mean, it's right at the mouth of the Delta. That was our historical record. The records confirm that this area in Mozambique was indeed once home to cheetahs. We studied the history and determined the risks were worth the effort to try to restore these magnificent creatures to the landscape. With the evidence required to back us up, 
we undertook the largest cheetah reintroduction ever attempted in history. So we had to go and collect these animals from conservation landscapes across southern Africa. Our objective is to capture wild individuals that can become the seed population that brings the species back to the Zambezi Delta after almost 100 years. Go right through your... In Southern Africa, we're working with the same cheetah subspecies. So we can move cheetah pretty much anywhere between this geographical region without breaking the genetic rules. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. We decided on holding them at a central quarantine boma manned by an experienced wildlife veterinarian called Dr. Mike Toft. Over the course of a week, all of the cheetahs were safely brought to a central quarantine facility before they could begin their journey to Mozambique. We have captured 10 suitable wild individuals from across Southern Africa that are to become the seed population that will restore them to the Zambezi Delta once more. They're being held in a quarantine facility or BOMA before they begin their journey to Mozambique. The cheetah arrived in individual batches, so we put them into individual BOMAs, four, two, three, and a one. Uh, off we go. We're off to the cheetah again because reintroductions need fine scale monitoring. We're going to want to identify the cheetah. At the moment, I'm doing my best to build up a really good identity kit based on their unique spot patterns. Who would have thought? In my lifetime, I would be moving lions and cheetahs to save them. I never thought that. In fact, I never thought I'd ever be in Africa in my entire life. And here I am. For me personally, the cheetah initiative is just another way of giving back and trying to recreate the way that it once was. Reintroductions are inherently risky affairs. And as a result, we lose about 15% of the cheetah that we'd relocate between protected areas. For this particular reintroduction, we looked no further than Dr. Peter Caldwell. Of the 6,000 cheetahs that he's immobilized and relocated, he's lost only one animal. I've just loaded my darts. I'm gonna do one solitary female and then the three Pilansberg ones. With all 10 cheetahs in one place, it's time to begin the last step of the process, preparing them for their journey to Mozambique. There's very many variables, movement, distance. Obviously, the weight of the dart you've got to take into consideration. The team moves as silently and quickly as possible to minimize the stress on the cats. And the opportunity is used to gather as much data as possible. 68.0. We've collected blood, we've collected hair for DNA, and then we've microchipped. The microchip we put under the skin at the base of the tail. And then I injected them with some antibiotics to prevent an infection at the dart site and some vitamins. 
and we're rehydrating them with Ringer's lactate drip, IV and subcut. And we're fitting GPS and VHF collars. We've got the first four loaded. They're now in the crates. We've got six more to go. There's a deep love for wildlife. It's always been in our family. We're working a little bit against time and light. So we've got the ninth, second last one. And they're a little bit skittish. We're just waiting for the last one maybe to come to the carcass. We're about to cross the first finish line. So we're very excited and it's been an excellent day for cheetah conservation. So if you have a lot of anti-government to the seat, you know, I was in my area, there was no uh, possibility of having the apparition of the cita. In the years past, when there was war, there was a lot of furtiva. There was no animal. There was no apparition of some animals, and now there was no apparition of the cita. It's been a very productive first afternoon here. We now have our cheetahs loaded. We've microchipped them, measured them. They're in their crates. We're loading them on the planes this morning. It's gonna be a big day for the cheetahs and a big day for all of us. I can't wait till we get through customs and into Mozambique. Oh. It's great that the family's here to see all this. What an exciting yeah. day, eh? It's either really good or really bad because it's really quiet. <laughs> <laughs> After an eventful morning, the cats begin the final league of their journey. The research team and community members both eagerly await the arrival of the new residents. So we're at the final stages. It's been a it's been a process. We spent the last three days getting here. It's a truth moment for sure. We're about to let them out, and this thing's becoming a reality quickly. Cheetahs were once hunted to nearly extinction, and uh, this is a vast hunting area. It's because of hunting in these vast ecosystems that we've been allowed to bring in the cheetahs. They're not going to be hunted here. They'll never be hunted here. But because of hunting, we've got two million acres where cheetahs can thrive and exist. Our foundation has decided to protect ecosystems. By protecting vast landscapes from top to bottom, everything benefits.
What do you think, Mary? I love it. They're beautiful, aren't they? Oh, they are. I turned and looked at my mother and what I saw on her face. That really made it for me. You know, there's a lot of parts that make it for me in this deal, but for her to be happy is probably the most. The cheetahs are kept in a holding facility for three weeks before their release. You want to give the cheetahs some time to acclimatize. You also want the cheetahs to recover and get to know each other in their new habitat. The final step will be to release them in their new home. We have successfully relocated 10 cheetahs to the Zambezi Delta ecosystem. However, they need time to acclimatize and recover before they can be released into this vast landscape. Unbelievable. If you can keep two million acres intact, it's not just about cheetahs and lions, it's about everything that inhabits that two million acres. fly over this delta with all its abundance, it's not hard to imagine a pair of cheetahs sitting out on the side of a termite mound, looking at all the wildlife. But there haven't been cheetah here for probably a hundred years or more. It's taken an enormous amount of work to restore this landscape to what it is today. The better part of 25 years of anti-poaching. We needed to totally involve our local community. They needed to feel that they were part and parcel of this whole operation. And without one complementing the other, we would never have achieved what we have today. Now we have the cheetahs in the boma. The plan is to release them within about a month. It's an emotional moment to feed them for the last time before they head out to become the wild cheetahs they're meant to be. So different than lions. Another beautiful cat. And who wants them to go extinct? Not me. So after the BOMA period, the next step is a really exciting one, and that's to release them out into this ecosystem. Exciting, but a little nerve-wracking. <laughs> Before you release the animals, it's important to know that the animals are relaxed. We'll open up the gates, and we'll drag a carcass out there so that they follow you out of the gate. It's really important to understand these introductions and get really good at them. Introducing cheetah into Maromeo is increasing the size of our meadow population by 30% in one relocation. There's not a lot of places left with two million acres. And when you look at their commitment to wildlife conservation and understand that, 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 that you don't have to agree with hunting, but having a hunting concession protects such a vast space. Hunting was once the cause of the species decline. It has come full circle, and it is hunting that has created viable ecosystems for them to repopulate. Knowing that they're out there makes me really proud of the difference that hunters can make.